<laughs> Nothing improper between you and Michael Jackson ever. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I knew him, uh, well, I didn't know him, and then all of a sudden I started to become famous, and then Michael Jackson started paying attention to my career, mm -hmm. and then inviting me to do certain things with like Beyonce and Usher and, you know, and Celine Dion and Luther Vandross, and we did like a, a couple charity songs together. I was picked to do that, and then, and then I, I, cre I created a relationship with him, and, uh, and, I, and then I started to really understand what the grown-up version of me was kind of going to be like. You right. Know? I mean, some and, would uh, say half-grown-up version of you, that he never quite reached yeah, the, the, he never full, did. No, you know, no, the full no, no, that's potential true. of being a, a real adult. That's true, but you know, the, the reason why Michael Jackson never really wanted to grow up is because he understood the uh, importance of the youth, mm. of our youth, and y your influence and his influence on our youth, and staying involved in it. That's why he always tried to be appealing to kids is because he always wanted to stay in, in you know, the current generation and stay in, involved in the evolution mm. and so that he could be a good role model for these kids, you know, to, to do the right things with the planet and with the earth. And he started, you know, becoming a humanitarian and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And, and that, that's just, you know, that's what he told me. So And it was basically a good, a, you think his influence was good? Oh, of course. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing because it influenced somebody like me. You know, and I was, uh, you know, when I was a kid and I got to look up to this man and spend time with him and, you know, go four wheeling in the mountains with him and, all, and him and Chris Tucker and all the all kind of crazy stuff, you know, that's fun. So that's was, fun. in my opinion, is a very special cause and the cause is our future and the future is our children. <laughs> I will continue to fight for them for the rest of my life. When you hear about the allegations, you know, did you see Leaving Neverland? Did I see Leaving Neverland? I think I watched a little bit of it. Isn't that the thing that, uh, what's his face did? Wade? Yeah. Did you know Wade? Yeah, Wade was the guy who pretended to be my brother on the Aaron's Party interlude albums. Because Nick wouldn't show up, so Wade Robson came and did it instead and pretended to be Nick. Okay, so when you hear that Wade all did a... skits in Aaron's Party, it's Wade Robson. When you hear that Wade Robson claimed that Michael Jackson was molesting him and now he's suing the Jackson estate and so forth. Mm. Well, what's your take on that? Who's suing? Wade. He's suing the estate. Yes. Him and the other guy are both suing. Why can't y'all go out and make your own money? <laughs> Get a job at freaking Starbucks or something, man. Come on. I mean, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, sorry to use the Lord's name in vain, but like, yo, man. Why you got to go after him? He's got kids. He's got an executor of the estate that runs at Great Raffle. Like, I don't, I don't understand why. Don't you see the pattern? They wait till they're gone to accuse him of being pedophiles. So nothing improper has ever happened to you, I mean, Michael. They, they don't do that to me. <laughs> they're so, calling me a. They're calling me. A, they're calling me a pedophile. So nothing improper. And I'm alive. <laughs> so nothing improper between you, and Michael Jackson, ever. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The, it, it's it's full. I mean, I'm writing a book, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth when the book is finished. Mm -hmm. But absolutely not. And that's why I'm so appalled by it. I just it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense about Lou Pearlman because he never did anything like that to me. Mm -hmm. It never made sense with any with Michael Jackson because he was nothing but nice and kind and loving to me. I smoked weed with Michael. Okay. Like, What's the most misunderstood thing about Michael Jackson? Do you think that you know him? Um, Probably a number of things. Right? That I don't know that anybody that lives that life is not going to be your average dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the simple ways, I mean, yeah. you know, you live that there's you live that kind of life and that sort of fame from five years old. You're not going to go about your every day like everybody else because you've never lived a life like everybody else. So how would you know how to do that? Exactly. So and I think people take those simple things and turn them into something, you know, ten times, a hundred times more strange than they are. One of the things I noticed about you, and, I, and this goes back to why I said you were a stand-up guy, um, we covered the trial, and you were one of the few people to stick up for him. Mm -hmm. and, and why do you think that was, and why was it important for you to stick up for him? 
Because he's always been a friend of me. That's what you do for friends. You tell the truth. You know? Uh, you know, I can't speak for him, but it would be an absolutely painful thing for anybody to go through. Yeah, I remember Tom Mestro said that, you know, once he got to know Michael and he was working on his case, Michael said that his biggest regret was settling that first lawsuit. Remember that one boy? Now, listen to this. I have to tell you this. Okay. So after I left the party and the next day I smoked weed with Michael and then I get I get in the limousine and I leave. I get back to the Sheraton Hotel at Universal over here. There's four FBI agents waiting for me in the hotel room. And my mom's there and she's like, tell them what happened. And I'm like, what do you mean tell them what happened? And I sit down with them and they all get asked these super sexually exploiting, you know, questions, mm-hmm. back backsided questions. And I knew that at my age already. And I looked at all four of them and I said, I said, are y'all crazy? I said, what you think I'm going to do? Tell you that Michael did something bad so that we, we can sue him for money? That's what I told him. I was like, you're crazy. And I looked over at my mom and I was like, are you serious, mom? I was like, what is going on here? Why are you letting this happen? And she goes, she goes, well, she goes, oh, well, I think something happened. You know, I think something. I'm like, really? That man did nothing but be hospitable, kind, loving, giving, everything you can think of. We rode four wheelers for five hours, me, him, and Chris Tucker in the mountains at nighttime after his birthday party. Him and I hung out and talked pretty much all night. Got a couple hours of sleep. I wake up. I, he's not even in the room. I, he pulled out a cop for me in his room because I asked him. I was like, I want to hang out with you. I want, you know, I want to be around. You know, it was Michael. Yeah. You know, I want to hang out with the Mike. I want to hang out with Michael. He pulled out a, a, a little cot or something. I laid on the cot. I wake up in the morning. His bed's made. There's a cleaning lady that wakes me up. I keep asking, where's Michael? I go over. He's got this, this huge statue figurine that Michael Jordan sent him for his birthday. Because he collected that stuff. Went and smoked some weed with him. Get in the car. And then all this shit happened when I got back to LA. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, and I, I looked at my mom. I go, are you really trying to go at Michael and use me for a money grab? I was like, nothing. And I looked at him right now. I said, nothing happened. Mm. I said, Michael was flirting with girls right in front of me. Actually. Yeah. And it was hilarious because he was very charming. I bet it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> he made he made girls just light up, blush, and he was he 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 and he, like I saw him looking at girls' booty. I said I, I saw you looking at her booty. He was like, mm. I was like, <laughs> and so I hear these stories of like Wade Robson, and then I'm like thinking to myself, wait, hold up, I know Wade Robson. Wade Robson pretended to be the voice on my my album Aaron's Party for my brother. Because my brother didn't do it, so Wade Robson did it. It was like a little spoof thing, an interlude in one in my second album, Aaron's Party. And Wade Robson did the voice of like pretending to be my brother or some yeah. shit. And I'm like, wait, hold up. Wade leaving Neverland? What is this? Like, what do you mean leaving Neverland? Like, I left Neverland. Everything was cool, homie. <laughs> like, what's your problem? Did you dream this up? Did your parents tell you to do this? Yeah, I mean, they tried to sue for like a hundred million, and ultimately it was dropped. They got nothing out of it, Dude, as they should. Nothing. Uh, as they that should. dude didn't do shit like that. Yeah, like I knew Michael better than all of them. Yeah, I, I believe even, it. Even everything Macaulay, that I've seen. If it was yeah, Macaulay I, right not, now. I'm not buying it. Even I'm if not, it was Macaulay Culkin sitting right here, he would tell you the same thing I did with the same assertiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Aaron Carter. When Michael met you, mm-hmm. he was very interested in you, wasn't he? No, I, I don't think he was interested like everybody per- you don't? portrays him to be. No, did, did he's he give definitely, you a car? He is definitely, no, no. Is he reading did. this situation wrong, Nick? Let's be. No, no, no. I'm going to defend him. I'm going to defend him. you don't even need to. No, you don't even need to because <laughs> I, it really pisses me off that people think about I Michael think like it. that. Because, I do. Well, you're wrong. No, but wait. You're wrong, Howard. Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you something. You're wrong, How old are you now? How old are you now? 18. All right. 
Do you sit in? How old were you at the time Michael Jackson was hanging out with you? Fifteen. Okay, you were fifteen. How old was he? In his forties? Yeah. I don't know. All right. All right. So. Would you ever hang out with him like at his house? Yeah. And like, does he want to hang out with you now? No, I haven't spoken to him. <laughs> right. well, Actually, I saw Michael take a, a girl home from his own party too. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. No. And I stayed right, in the, I, I stayed ask, in movie were theater. There any girls Chris, Tucker, <laughs> Chris Tucker was staying in the movie theater, and I stayed on the other side of the movie theater. Wait, so you were blonde, you were young, you had you were hairless. I mean, come on, you had to be. You, <laughs> I don't know about hairless. All right, did he put his arms around you? Did he touch you in any way? Never. Did never he ever say, hey, "Why don't we have a sleepover"? Never. Never suggested never a sleepover. Never heard anything like that. What happened was we went there, we hung out. I mean, we literally hung out with all these people, and I'm not gonna lie it's a little awkward a little weird a little different you know like it's not like everybody else's life but he's a nice guy that's sad man this life can be sad if you let it yeah it could be really lonely and really sad if you let it you know also he had the kids you know and yes that changes you but i don't think it fully changed him you know hmm. i don't think it really because it, it it was hard for him to, I think, not to have had the actual emotional connection to make that child. You know what I mean? Mm 